All right, there was <clears throat> a poor man used to uh, uh, collect, uh, a poor person he used to sit in front of this bank and he would um, collect money. Collect money, people would give him, you know, quarters, dollars, whatever it was. <clears throat> and the end of the day, he would um, go to the bank and he would deposit a bag in the bank. He had, he had a, a uh, <clears throat> what do they call it? A, a, a drawer in the bank. What do they call it? A, a safe deposit box in the bank. And he would bring this small bag and he would deposit it there. And he would, <clears throat> early in the morning, would come and get this bag out, come and take the bag out. So everybody assumed that he took the money that he had gathered up and he would put it in the bank. Probably a not normal guy. How much money could he have gotten every day? You know, he collected $10, $20, how much? $100. And he had a special <clears throat> uh, the, the, the deposit box, not, not a deposit box, a safe de a safe box in the in the in the bank, and he would put his money, he would put the money in there. That's what everybody figured. Anyway, once there was a strike, there was a strike in the bank, and the bank was closed. He came in the morning, <clears throat> and he wanted to come in to get the money out. So the, there was a guard at the door. He said, "We're on strike. Nobody's here." <clears throat> so he said, I must have that bag. I have to have it. I said, listen, you know, what, what can we do? You know, we can't, I can't open the bank for you. It, we, we, it was announced in the radio, announced everywhere. We called people up, told them that there's going to be a strike. <clears throat> Probably the strike will be over in a couple of days. You don't have to worry. You'll get your, no, 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 I must have it now. I must have. It. And so he said, I'm sorry, you can't have it. I have to have it. Now. I made a big ruckus. <clears throat> And the, the, the police came, I guess the police on the street, what's wrong? He says, the man insists he has money. I want his, uh, they tried to convince him, no way. So the guard that was there had mercy on this guy. So I said, listen, tell me how much money there is in the bag, and I'll give it to you from my pocket, and you'll pay me back afterwards. You know, how much could there be? <clears throat> he said, it's not money. <clears throat> it's tefillin. I want my tefillin. I want you to open it up. So the, the, the guard says, for a pair of tefillin, listen, go down to the store. The guard, there's a synagogue over here. I happen to, the guard happened to be Jewish. He said, listen, I'm not a religious Jew at all, but I know there's a, the rabbi who's down here in the big synagogue. As he comes in and deposits, he says, good morning to me. Sometimes I talk to him. You can go to him. You go over to him and, and, and talk to him. I think I even have his number. He said, no, I want my tefillin back. And he started making a big noise and a big this said, I want it back. And he started crying and he wanted this to fill in back. So, I mean, he wasn't making any trouble. He wasn't, you know, threatening anybody. So the guard felt really bad for him, you know. So he called up, <clears throat> he called up his manager and he saw the manager came and they tried to explain to him. He said, no, there's no way I'm going to, I want my to fill in. <clears throat> so, um, they finally got to the whole manager of the bank and they made a whole special thing that they opened the bank up specially for him. And he went down into the thing and he took out the tefillin. He has this tefillin thing. He's got his tefillin. He wants my tefillin. I don't want anybody else's tefillin. And so when they came out, the guard asked him, what's so special about these tefillin? What, what, what happened? And so he said, now, now here's the part. I hope I remember this part. And these tefillin belong to me in Auschwitz. I had the tefillin. I somehow or other smuggled them in to Auschwitz. <clears throat> and it happened to be that, that the Satmar Rebbe was there with me. Rebbe Yoel of Satmar. It was a very holy Jew. And <clears throat> this was like in Hungary near the end of the war. <clears throat> so the Rebbe of Satmar he, they were taking him away. They were taking the, 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 There was a whole story. Anyway, he got freed. He got freed from Satmar. They made a whole deal. It's not not that important. But he, with another couple thousand people, whatever, they they were freed from. <clears throat> but somehow or other, there was the Satmar Rebbe 
<clears throat> he lost his tefillin. He lost his tefillin. And he wanted, he heard that I had a pair. And he wanted just to put on my tefillin before he left. Before he left, because they were taking him away. And they heard that I had this pair of tefillin, or everybody, they knew that I had a pair of tefillin. Anyway, he sent a special boy to take the tefillin from me. He promised he would just put them on, and then he would send them back immediately. And I said, okay. And he, he put the tefillin on. It, it, I, I gave him the tefillin. <clears throat> and five minutes after I gave him the tefillin, there came a big commander, and they took us away from Auschwitz. They took us, they moved us to another place, a work camp. And it must have been that the boy came back and he saw that I wasn't there. And they told him that he took him away. Took him away. And so the Satmar Rebbe held on to these tefillin and he put on the tefillin every day. And meanwhile, he was looking all the time, he was looking around for me. <clears throat> How could you possibly find, it's like finding, you know, more than a needle in a haystack. First of all, if there's a needle in a haystack, at least you know that the needle is there. Here, he doesn't even know, didn't know if I was alive. He didn't know where I was. <clears throat> I think he knew the person's name. Anyway, finally, <clears throat> after a long time, and me, I meanwhile, I finished the, the whole, I got out of the Holocaust, and I, I left Judaism. What I saw just scrambled my brain, and I just, you know, I, I basically left even being a human being for a while. And then I got these tefillin back, the tefillin back, the tefillin. What, how did I get them back? That they searched for me. One day somebody knocked on my door and said, is your name such and such? And I said, yes, it is. He said, this is the Satmar Rebbe had put these tefillin on all the time. I don't remember if it was after the Satmar Rebbe passed away or not, because he used to put these tefillin on every day. I think in addition to his regular tefillin that he had, <clears throat> but he used to put on these tefillin every day. And he's, he's holding these tefillin, and he wants you, he, 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 they're precious to him, and he wants to give you a big thanks <clears throat> for what you did. And he, these are the tefillin that the Satmar Rebbe put on. <clears throat> and as soon as I got those tefillin back, and I realized his great gratitude, and I felt the holiness of the tefillin, so now I put the tefillin on every day also. Those are the tefillin that I put on every day. But they're so precious to me, I don't want to hold them by myself. I don't want to hold them in my house. Maybe I'll lose them again. That trauma of losing the tefillin was so great. <clears throat> That's why I put them in the bank every day. The guard heard this, and he said, these tefillin are so meaningful to you, and they were so meaningful to this Rebbe, and he searched for you for years in order to give it back to you. There must be something special about te these tefillin. He said, from now on, I'm also going to put on tefillin. And he bought, he, oh, 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 oh that, that, this is so he said, I decided I'm going to put on tefillin. So he decided he's putting on tefillin also. When this man, the, the, the one who used to collect money, he passed away. <clears throat> so he had a, a, a fortune of money that he had collected and he just never used it. He, I don't know. No, I mean, a hundred thousand dollars, whatever it is. <clears throat> so the, the guard of the bank who had become sort of close to this person I mean, he was still, his brains was still scrambled after the Holocaust, you know. <clears throat> I mean, you can imagine that the, the people now, almost all of them that were in this massacre that would just happen now in October, those Israelis that were there, almost all of them have to be treated. Some of them are, are still, the ones who survived, they have to be treated. And they just saw, you know, a few hours of these horrible things. I mean, there certainly were, you know, atrocious things. But imagine people that saw this every day for years. I mean, it's just, and only because they were Jews. There was no other reason why. <clears throat> anyway, so he was, anyway, when he passed away, so he left all this money. And I don't, re I think that it was, he left the money, as far as I remember in the story, he left it to the guard. And the guard took all the money and he bought with it tefillin to give tefillin to people who needed it. And this would, because of this pair of tefillin, so it ended up that there were hundreds of pairs of tefillin that were now being used by people that needed them. So we see the self-sacrifice of Jews <clears throat> is um, indescribable, and it's indescribably good. And that's what we talked about in the Hasidut class. That's the good 
that's this light of good that was concealed in the world, this good that nothing can possibly extinguish. And it's found in the commandments, in the physical commandments. Have a good Shabbos with Mashiach now. God willing, we'll meet together on Sunday, 8.15.